Wake up, everyone. It's time for the Steve Noble Show, where biblical Christianity meets the everyday issues of life in your home, at work, and even in politics. Steve is an ordinary man who believes in an extraordinary God. And on his show, there's plenty of grace and lots of truth, but no sacred cows. Call Steve now at 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Or check him out online at thestevenobleshow.com. And now, here's your host, Steve Noble. Well, we've got a lot to do this week, as we do every week. A lot of things to talk about, a lot of news out there. And one of the things that uh, continually is going on is what's happening in the financial world and in the banking world and in the markets. And uh, and that uh, affects all of us in one way or another, whether you have a ton of money in the market or a very little money in the market or even no money in the market, the cost of things uh, inflation and what's going on with our national debt. These are all things that we need to be paying attention to as followers of Jesus Christ. And oftentimes I know that some people are like, oh man, uh, uh, you know, so what's, what's going on with, uh, talking about finances and all this stuff. And that doesn't really make sense. And this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but you got to remember that, uh, Jesus talked a lot about money. So if he does it, uh, it's okay for us to do it, and uh, he makes much of it in terms of, excuse me for a second, in terms of just dealing with money and possessions, that's all over the place. 16 of the 38 parables were concerned with how to handle money and possessions in the Gospels. Uh, one out of 10 verses, 288 in all, deal directly with the subject of money. Bible offers, conversely, uh, an interesting comparison here, 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses on faith. This is directly, okay, but more than 2,000 verses directly on money And possessions. And so those are things that we need to uh, be paying attention to, to say the least. And so that's uh, that's why we do this on Mondays. And the first Monday of the month is always uh, when we do Money Monday updates. Those are the other Mondays of the month. But the first Monday of the month, which we happen to be on uh, right now, we do a full show with our good friend David Fisher from Landmark Capital, Landmark Gold. Dot com And by the way, uh, aloha to you, David Fisher, and happy anniversary to you and your awesome wife, Marianne, 18 years of marriage. Well, thank you so much. Aloha. Mahalo is uh, the word for thank you in Hawaiian, and I appreciate that. You know, it feels kind of weird here. I'm I'm on your program, and I'm not wearing my suit and tie today. I'm wearing uh, <laughs> shorts and a, and a, uh, a Hawaiian shirt. Well, uh, good for from you. My, from my hotel here. But uh, I certainly enjoy being on your program, and I love what I do, even though I'm on vacation. We're here to help people find out what's happening this week. Well, let's not uh, let's not use too much Hawaiian lingo here because I don't want to lead all of us to uh, stray and to covet and to uh, be jealous about what you got going on there. Uh, but I certainly appreciate you being here and taking the time. And, and, we'll, and we'll do this hour, and then uh, you're under doctor's orders, that being me, to uh, go hang out with Mary Ann and enjoy the beach and enjoy Hawaii. Don't work too much while you're there this week, dude. I'll follow your orders, doctor. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, so we, we've talked a lot about government debt and treasuries. Actually, last week on Wednesday, August 1st, I did the whole show on it. Uh, and, and you can get that on the podcast on the website or on Facebook Live. And talking about how much we spend on a daily basis. And even if we went out and took all the money from all the richest people and all the richest corporations, uh, all their global profits and every dime that people make over $250,000 a year, if we killed off the Forbes 400 and took all their stuff, uh, forget the death tax, take it all, that that we could barely pay for one year of expenditures for the federal government. So this is a big deal uh, and, and an important topic. And last week, the Treasury, on the heels of that, made a historic announcement. So tell us about that. You know, this is kind of like we're today, we're on the 73rd year anniversary of the atomic bomb, uh, Hiroshima, and that was obviously devastating. This is going to be the financial devastation of that. Unfortunately, it's not something I enjoy uh, citing or you know, letting our listeners know, but it is a huge magnitude of financial news. It's not being talked about that much, although it is going to take into effect and we'll probably feel the full brunt of it probably sometime next year. And so the announcement was the Treasury estimates that it's going to need to create a debt or borrow money, $769 billion for the second half of the year. Now, let's put this into perspective. What does that mean? Well, I was on your program in February, and I said that the Treasury made the announcement on February 2nd that it needed to borrow $955 billion for 2018. If you remember back then, right. I said that's not going to be enough. It's going to be somewhere around $1.3 trillion is what I think it's going to be. And so if you put the numbers together, 
The first quarter, the Treasury issued $488 billion. The second quarter, $75 billion. And the second half, they're saying $769 billion. That's $1.332 trillion. I think it's going to even be higher than that number because they continue to go beyond what they estimate. So, unfortunately, the Treasury is way out of whack here. The Treasury's Borrowing Advisory Committee said also that the debt sales will continue to grow monthly and over the next several years. Now, now, why isn't this? Uh, why do you think this is not making all kinds of news? And Donald Trump's tweeting about it. I mean, they're talking about uh, hundreds of billions of dollars, and and, and it's kind of like you hear crickets. Uh, what'd you say, Steve? That's kind of exactly the response. What the news does <laughs> yeah. with this? There, there is a little bit coming from CNBC and some financial news, but it's we don't feel the brunt of it yet. We're starting to feel the brunt of tariffs, so they're being talked about. But we're not feeling the brunt of a debt, and we feel like, okay, that's something that we'll, the government will address sooner or later, and then we'll, get, we'll take care of it when we get there, kind of like the debt ceiling and how Congress acts. That's why we have government shutdowns. But this is not – that's why I said it's not going to affect us now, but it, we will have the effect of it in a severe way probably about next year, maybe next year, maybe even earlier than that. There's an economist that came on – uh, Bloomberg News said it could happen in the next six months that we would feel the brunt of this. Yeah, and so that uh, that uh, we kind of hear about it now and feel it later, and and hopefully people will start to pay more attention. Well, we're talking about the federal government and everything. The Fed often comes up. We often talk about them raising rates uh, in this uh, as we deal with our debt and look at the cost of living. So what what's going to go on that? Do you think the Fed's going to continue to raise rates since this escalates our debt, or do they not pay attention and even care about that? Well, the Fed is is independent from the government. They don't work for the government. Uh, They're a private corporation. They're not federal, and they have no reserve. And the person who President Trump assigned to the Fed, Jerome Powell, is a data-driven guy. He's not a uh, market-sensitive person like previous Fed chairmen like uh, Janet Yellen and Ben Bernanke. So he's going to be on course. He's not going to let this change his mind. Uh, and others are chiming in, like uh, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, uh, largest bank in the United States, over the weekend said that rates are going to continue to rise. And he talked about the 10-year Treasury, which is at 2.938% today. And that's the thing to watch. We've been watching it. But he's saying right now, this is his quote. He says, quote, I think rates right now should be 4%. Wow. He said, you better be prepared to deal with rates at 5% or higher it's a higher probability than most wow. people think right now. I'm going to put so you on hold, David. We're, we're coming up on a break. We're talking about those rates, 4 to 5%. What would that do to the economy in your pocket? We'll be right back. Because you are more. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble. The Steve Noble Show. Great to be with you. First Monday of the month. So we're talking to our good friend David Fisher from Landmark Capital. Landmarkgold.com is their website, as always. Landmarkgold.com and talking about all different kinds of uh, financial issues. And uh, will that all affect us individually? Pocketbooks, uh, spending, debts. Uh, your investments, dealing with an ups and down, up and down topsy turvy market, and today the market was uh, up a little bit, and so you, you go, okay, that's uh, that's better. It's but it's been up and down, up and down all over the place. We'll talk about gold too as we move through the show today. By the way, just a reminder, we just started and just moved into chapter three in the book of Proverbs on the Daily Dose devotional. So I hope you'll check that out. It's uh, I love writing them, and they're very practical, short, hard hitting. If you like the tone of the show here during the afternoons, then you'll definitely definitely love the daily dose devotional. We'll be in the book of we'll be in the book of Proverbs though for a while. There's a lot there obviously. It's very practical, pretty hard hitting. I try to have as much grace with that as I can. And most of the time when I'm writing, I'm I'm kind of also writing to myself as we uh, go into God's word together. So all you need to do to get that, that's in your email box every morning. Just text the word dose, D O S E, the daily dose. That's what the name of it is. Text the word dose to six, six, eight, six, six. That's all you have to do. Text the word dose to six, six, eight, six, six. And we'll get you on that email list and uh, hopefully help you get uh, going on, uh, on your day uh, with a bit of a dose of God's word. And again, in the book of Proverbs just started chapter three, talking to our good friend, like I said, David Fisher from landmark capital uh, and David, again, and thank you for taking time to be with us. Uh, make sure you enjoy your, your time out there in the Hawaiian Islands with your wonderful bride. And thanks for taking the time to uh, keep us up to date. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, my brother. 
Okay, so you were just mentioning, and this was kind of wild, that somebody was talking about uh, the Fed going uh, to, that we really should be at four and five percent interest rates, which would obviously tank the economy. Anything that President Trump would want to do in the midst of that, that, that would that would tank him. Uh, is that is that really a serious prediction or a serious thought? And where do you think we're actually going to go with interest rates in this country? Well, he's referring to the yield, the ten-year yield, which is at two point nine percent, and. So for yields to go up to 4 or 5%, rates would, would continue to climb, and we'd be above 3% in rates, which definitely would affect the economy. So rates are going to go up. Uh, we have to raise rates. The Fed has to attract or give an incentive for people to hold this debt that the Treasury is ballooning like crazy. Otherwise, the, who's going to buy the Treasury? You have to have a reason to buy it. And that's all an interest rate is, is an incentive for somebody to hold uh, U.S. debt. Yeah, and so that's that's where I think that all of us have to be paying attention because a lot of these things that we can sit there and listen to you talk and listen to this information, David. But we got to remember that all this stuff's kind of like a boomerang, and and eventually it comes back around. We hear policy and we hear news, but for most of us, this does boil down into everyday living, doesn't it? Yeah. So simply put, you know, as the Fed raises rates, that creates credit cards will raise their rates, which costs more household income to pay that debt structure. If you have an arm in your mortgage, that will raise rates also. If you're thinking about getting a mortgage, that's going to raise that. If you're thinking about buying a car, cars are going to cost more. Rates are going to cost more. This is gets trickled down from business to business because businesses use what you call a line of credit in manufacturing, which they offer to the consumer. So this is going to be a cost of goods costing more, which means inflation, which means that's what's the best environment to hold gold is an inflationary environment. So that's this is going to be a, a detriment. It will be recessionary. It will trigger a recession at some point. We're not there yet, but this will be a major ignition to a recession. Yeah, and that's uh, something that uh, none of us want to hear because that has real-world implications uh, on on down the road for all of us. Uh, so, so should we be? I mean, ultimately, in the long term, should we should we do something to kind of brace ourselves for these rate uh, increases in the future? As we talk about our investments and we talk about gold and things like that. Well, you want to manage your debt first of all. I always advocate don't uh, carry large amounts of debt and try not to have any debt, especially credit card debt, since there's no asset behind it. Um, and if you're going to have a mortgage, have a fixed mortgage. So manage your debt is the most important thing here. Diversify is the second most important thing. I mean, it doesn't make sense to invest in something when you're buying on credit to invest. So right. get your debt under control, then invest. And when investing, make sure you're properly diversified. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. It'd be very unwise to have all your money in gold. It's just as unwise to have all your money in stocks. So diversify because when the recession came last time, Steve, stocks got hit 45%. Gold went up 56% the first year and went on a multi-year run and went two and a half times its value in four years. Yeah, really remarkable to see that happen and to pay attention to that over time. We're talking to David Fisher, Landmark Capital. Uh, their website is always landmarkgold.com, landmarkgold.com. Or if you still want to operate the old-fashioned way, as David says from time to time, their phone number is 844-879-8882. Tariff seems to come up every week. Uh, last week there were several announcements, David, about tariffs and, and uh, Donald Trump in the United States and then all of a sudden China coming back. So where are we at? Any new information on tariffs? Well, the China is talking about responding to the possible uh, president's uh, uh, response of putting two hundred billion dollars on uh, tariffs, Chinese tariffs. And if they do, China is going to respond. They can't do it tit for tat, dollar for dollar, um, but they can do because China we sell, uh, we buy four times as much for them as they buy from us. So they yeah. can't. We can't impose a dollar for dollar tariff, but they're going to impose sixty billion dollars. More importantly, they said it, their quote is they are prepared for a protracted war, uh, and they don't fear any of the sacrificing short-term economic interests considering the unreasonable demands that the U.S. is putting on them. And China will never surrender to blackmail and will definitely rise to defend its own interest when it values, involves its national interest and its national dignity, quote-unquote. So they're looking at this as, as a very personal thing. And that's unfortunately, we got two very strong leaders, President Trump and the leader Xi, 
from China who are very adamant that they're not going to back down, so they're kind of digging in. And uh, President Trump was tweeting some things this morning. I kind of wanted to do a fact check if we have the time to do that, Steve. Yeah, I think we – well, we got a couple more minutes before we hit the break. So we'll just start this. You know, first and foremost, I want to say I'm not against our president. I've said that tariffs all along will not work. Now we're starting to see some facts. I I wrote a a newsletter, a two-part newsletter. One's already out. I have some more information that's going to come out in part two. But President uh, Trump uh, uh, tweeted over the weekend that tariffs are working big time. Well, here's the fact check. The trade deficit has risen $100 billion since tariff. Dollar is strengthening against the one, uh, so it's causing more, uh, more of a deficit happening. And only Mexico, it looks like they're one country that's even close to a trade deal. There's a little bit of noise from Europe, but China's just digging in their heels on this. And what, what was the trade deficit? It's gone up how much? It's gone up $100 billion. It's now close to when you have the goods and services. It's close to $900 billion. Uh, put into perspective, last year, at uh, the beginning of the year, it was $753 billion. So that's up up $100 billion since we started having all these tariff tariffs. talks back since and forth with Donald put Trump. Into place. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Since, since tariffs were put into place. Got it, yeah, which the was... Trade yeah, trade deficit. Yeah, trade deficit we've deficit had for a while. rise automatically. Of course. Well, I want to keep talking about that. I'm going to put you on hold, David. We have a little bit of a delay. I'm going to put you on hold. We're coming up into the break, and we're going to keep talking about that fact-checking, the Trump, the, the Trump tweets from this morning when it comes to tariffs, because it's one thing to say, hey, we're going to even the, the playing ground. Uh, but when you're going up against China and against President Xi over there, he doesn't have to worry about public opinion. Donald Trump does. We'll talk about that when we come back with David Fisher, Landmark Capital. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble, The Steve Noble Show. Great to be with you. You can join us live on Facebook now that it's uh, working. (laughs) And uh, pray for the show. Pray for me, if you would, please. It seems like the last two weeks we've had all kinds of technical issues. And and I know we're we're getting ready to come into a fundraising season because uh, this is Christian radio. So just for those of you that don't really understand how Christian radio works, pretty much everything you hear on Christian radio, just about everything except some of the big shows like on Salem Broadcasting and places like that, where they have some like paid quote-unquote talent, Dennis Prager, people like that. But almost all of Christian radio, including pastors and stuff that you love to listen to, are buying the airtime, and that's no different here. Uh, That's why you'll occasionally hear some on the commercials, you'll hear a thing for Sacred Cow Killers, which is our monthly donor program. And that's a way, because we've expanded into a bunch of markets, and God has allowed that, but that comes at great cost, I mean financial cost. So when uh, it, it, it can be a struggle, there can be spiritual attacks. We've had a lot of those in the last two weeks as we've gone into some deep into the pool subjects and me getting involved uh, activism wise with a pro-life thing here in, in the Raleigh area and in North Carolina called Love Life. And uh, that went great on Saturday. But it seems like there's been a lot more kind of spiritual type attacks on the ministry lately, which uh, to me just means that we're ticking the devil off and that's a great place to be, but it's also a challenging place to be. So uh, pray for us and and, uh, go to the website, go to the Steve Noble Show, and you can check out uh, being a monthly donor. We need those. That's a real big deal. And we've got our annual fundraiser coming up, which I'm really excited about. That's called Called to Worship. That's going to be on Thursday, October 4th. So if you uh, are here in the North Carolina area, especially here in the Triangle area where I live, uh, we would love to have you come out. I'll start sending information out about that and everything. So we'll have some great testimony again this year. Uh, great on stage interview. Matt Pop will be doing the music. You hear a lot of Matt's music here on the on the bumper music when we come out of the commercial breaks. So just a lot of things going on there and a lot of ways that we can partner. Another way is the Daily Dose devotional, which kind of gets you into the information stream each morning, Monday through Friday. You'll get uh, these Daily Dose devotionals that I write personally. And uh, we're we're right now just moved into the book of Proverbs. This is the first new one I've written in a couple years. So it's really been invigorating for me and fun and uh And God really speaking through that. We just started chapter three in Proverbs today. So you can get that, get on that list. Just text the word DOSE, Daily Dose Devotional, DOSE, D O S E, to 66866. And you'll get on the email list that way, nice and easy. Text the word DOSE to 66866. Enough about me. Let's get back to uh, talking to our special guest, David Fisher, who's with us every week. David Fisher at uh, Landmark Capital, their website, landmarkgold.com. And and really a, a, a huge blessing to the show and somebody that we go to that I trust. He's my brother in Christ. 
and brings great knowledge, great wisdom and expertise to these conversations. And and his business, which is Landmark Capital and LandmarkGold.com, uh, he's not on here like, you know, beating everybody up to, to call and buy this and buy that. Uh, he's here to help us and to serve us and to serve the Lord. And uh, But people do go check it out and get great information and, and, and have great relationships with David's business. LandmarkGold.com. And David, as always, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. I, I wanted to comment, you know, the scripture says the kingdom of God suffers violence and violent men and women take it by force. And, you know, you're on the front line, Stephen, and the listeners just, if you hear Steve's voice, let it be an, an urgent call to say a prayer for Steve and his family, because he's really trying to get the gospel out there. And if you can support him, great. I know that's something that Mary and I have done periodically. And I want to tell you, I, I, get to sit down with people and hear people call my company from your program and tell me how much of a blessing you are to them. So I want to make sure that uh, you're hearing that and, you know, call into the company, even if you just want to just say, Hey, Steve's such a great blessing. And I'll pass that on to Steve. So he's a great (laughs) guy. Let's support him. Anyway, thank you. you for the accolade. I appreciate partnering with you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you, my friend. And uh, and so we were you were talking about earlier, and I think this is important. I appreciate you saying that you support the president whenever you can. So do I. I pray for him regularly. I don't always agree with Donald Trump. I don't always agree with the way he does, yep. he, he does business. Uh, and so for us as Christians, we need to be prophetically speaking the truth and holding uh, – uh, those in power take them to account and uh and we shouldn't the only the only person we should ever throw down with 100 percent would be jesus christ himself so you were talking about some of his tweets and these claims about the tariffs and you were fact checking those let's pick up because you were saying the trade deficit actually we have been dealing with that for years but since the tariffs have been announced that's gone up 100 billion dollars correct and that's partially because the dollar has gone up against the currency of the chinese called the yuan has gone down. So that creates more of a trade deficit. So it's not actually working in our favor as of yet. It might, but I don't think it will. The other thing he said uh, today is that every country wants to take wealth out of the U.S. Uh, well, every country also wants to support their own uh, best interests, just like we want to support President Trump wants to make America great. The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, wants to make Canada great. And so this is where the rubber meets the road is that all these countries want to make their own countries great. That's just part of being a leader. Uh, so, um, but you know, we send them dollars and they, and we buy their goods. So we need them to support the trade with us. Otherwise, if they weren't buying our dollars, that would create a whole nother problem. Right. Um, he also said that I, I can say that if they come, let's tax them. If they don't want to be taxed, then let's, Make them build the product in the United States. You know, actually, U.S. consumers and companies pay for higher prices of tariffs. It gets passed off to them uh, in reference to building a product in the United States. Harley-Davidson, the most of the American-made product, is diversifying its manufacturing to Europe just to survive. And Apple, an American company, creates iPhones in China. So, yeah. I mean, this is just how it works in the new world. It's not... We're not living in the 60s and 50s anymore. This is how it works in this environment. And you mentioned this earlier with uh, President Xi over in China, and this is scary. I mentioned this just as we were going out uh, into the break with that, 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 you know, they came out and said, hey, they're prepared for a protracted war over these tariffs. And, and it's easy for him to say because he doesn't have to answer to the people over there. But Donald Trump, the president of the United States, is is going to face some backlash as these things, uh, if they don't pan out and if we don't win some of these battles, and there's real cost to not only American businesses and business owners, but American consumers as we have to start paying more for certain things. Uh, do, you, do you think Trump will ever kind of, uh, I hate to use the word cave, but do you think he'll ever be affected by negative uh, reviews in, in the people over here in America versus just kind of this bravado that he's brought to the table dealing with China and other countries? Well, I think, Steve, unfortunately, the pain has to get greater <clears throat> Excuse me for that to happen which means more detriment to the United States. Uh, a fact check that he said that it means that we're going to have more job and more, more more jobs and great wealth. Here's the unfortunate thing in reference to that. We have had, had job reduction. There was a survey that was done by CNBC who surveyed all economists, leading economists, and they all agreed that for it was a five to one. For every one job that was saved due to tariffs, five jobs have been lost. 
so it's it's not creating jobs and I can give example after example I mean there's the even in the steel industry the the NLMX the US steel company in Pennsylvania Indiana has already paid 80 million dollars in tariffs because of the steel tariffs that went into effect from China yeah. um and they now might have to go out of business and lay off uh, and there's about 1100 workers in the steel industry from this company that's been around for decades mm-hmm. there's lots of companies that are feeling the effect of tariffs. It's not producing jobs. It's actually creating a deficit. There's $21 billion that is created in revenue, though, from tariffs, because tariffs is a tax. But he said it was going to pay down the national debt. So in reference to the national debt, we're talking trillions. Right. And it's grown $1.6 trillion under President Trump's leadership, while only $21 billion has come in from revenue from tariffs, but $12 billion has to go out to subsidize soybean farmers and other farmer subsidies. So it's just not really working yet. Yeah, and, and this is a dangerous game, and, and he's willing to play it, his bravado, his, his background in, in real estate and, and basically being a speculator. And that's the way he would play that game with his own business, but to play that game uh, with everybody else's business and with the U.S. economy and with real jobs, that's a totally different world. And, and I think the jury's out. This is a very dangerous game of poker he's playing, and we're just going to have to give it some more time. But like you said, there are real things happening right now that are really affecting people in America, and we have to be very cautious as we move forward. What Let's talk about something that's right in the center of your wheelhouse, David, at LandmarkGold.com, which, of course, is gold. It's gone down a little this year. So so why is that happening? And, and I have a few other questions about it so we can make sure we understand uh, the role of precious metals, specifically gold, as we look at our investments. Well, gold is doing what it's supposed to do. The dollar, When dollars go up, gold goes down. And if the dollar has risen significantly this year, Gold has only dropped a little bit, which tells us how the strength of gold actually is. So, I mean, gold should be down about 100 or uh, or maybe even up to $150 more than it is right now in reference to how much the dollar has risen. So I'm not concerned about where gold is at right now because it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's, it's, it's supporting the offset of the dollar increase. Yeah, and I think it's important for us to to remember that as as I started to get educated on this subject of gold, I always kind of put it in the cl- same classification. Well, you got stocks, and you have mutual funds, and then you have gold, but it's a different tool than that. So when we come back, we're going to keep kind of doing some gold one hundred and one with David Fisher on the other side of the break. David is with Landmark Capital, LandmarkGold dot com, and we're going to keep talking about that, a couple other issues, and then tariffs, some newsletter information, some other papers that are out there. That can help you understand what's going on in the world. It's only getting more complicated. Have you noticed that? But we are called to be stewards of everything, including our money. That's why we're talking to David Fisher on today's Money Monday. This is Steve Noble. We'll be right back. Well, I got a message. I got a song. Can I get a witness? Tell me what's going on. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble, The Steve Noble Show. Great to be with you again. A reminder, just because uh, it's really been great to, to be involved in the Daily Dose devotionals, and I hope that uh, you'll allow me to uh, bless you each morning, Monday through Friday, with that. And all you have to do is text the word DOSE, D-O-S-E, to 66866. You'll get a quick reply, and then we'll just get your email, and you'll be right on the list. You'll get the, the next Daily Dose tomorrow morning uh, there in your email box to help you get your, started, your day started uh, with the Word of God. And it's pretty easy to read. It takes a couple minutes at the most. And uh, we're in the book of Proverbs right now, just started chapter three. We'll be in the book of Proverbs for the next several months because there's so much fruit in there to pick off that tree. So just text the word dose to 66866 and we'll get you on the list. Talking to David Fisher, our good friend, and uh, not just a friend of the show, but a supporter of the show, a great partner, a content partner. Uh, They help support the show financially. And my brother in Christ and David and his wife, Marianne, and it's just a great relationship. We've been doing radio together now for Gosh, what is it? Is that like almost three years now, David? Yeah, it's coming up on three years here, I think, next month. Yeah, pretty amazing. And uh, uh, just thank the Lord for you and your help. We've started to talk a little bit about gold. And I know for a lot of people, this was kind of a confusing and intimidating subject to me at first when we first started talking. David and I spoke a lot, uh, a few hours on the phone before we ever did radio together because I just didn't understand it. I heard... Uh, people like Glenn Beck and other websites, and it all seemed kind of crazy to me. And I might as well go buy a safe and dig a hole somewhere out in Wyoming, grab my gold and my food storage, and I'll be okay. Uh, but th- but that's not it. And so we tend to look at it like it's like stocks and bonds and mutual funds and gold, but it really doesn't play the same role in our investment portfolio that all those other things play, does it? 
No, because there's no debt tied to gold. It's not based upon corporate earnings, and it's not paper that you know can. Stocks have gone to zero. I'm not saying all will, and I'm not saying that's going to happen. But there are a lot of companies that have gone out of business. Gold can't go out of business. It's been around for six thousand years. It has been previously our monetary system. That's been biblical, and that's where our money system came from. Was the sundry laws out of the book of Leviticus? And so as we as we look at this year, because oftentimes we kind of think uncertainty is good for gold. We've certainly had a lot of uncertainty this year. All you got to do is go look at the Dow Jones Industrials uh, for the for the year, and it looks like a great roller coaster ride. But but when it comes to gold, typically we would think, okay, that's that's where I want to be during uncertain times. Yet gold is down a little bit this year. So so what's happening there? Well, it's because, like I said, the dollar was moving up, so gold has to retract. Now, let me, let's put this into perspective. The World Gold Council put together a report recently uh, that came out that said, how much does it cost to mine an ounce of gold? And those, those numbers are between $1,040 and $1,410. So if gold is at 1208 today, we're in the midst of a mining cost of gold. So gold basically moves up as there's uncertainty when there's not a strong movement towards the dollar. I believe there's not going to be a strong movement down the road to the dollar because when something becomes too expensive, like the dollar is becoming, then it has to become cheaper in value. It has to move down. When something becomes very inexpensive or undervalued, that's when that asset is bought. This reminds me of 1999 when the Wall Street Journal on the front page said, don't buy gold, it's lost its luster. Very little did they know that was the very bottom of gold. And then six months later, we're in a raging bull market in gold that lasted for 12 years. So when you get like the Wall Street Journal and other organizations like that that are kind of poo-pooing gold, why do they do that? Well, it competes with stocks. So when people say, you know, I, I want to diversify, what are they diversifying out of? They're diversifying out of their stock portfolio typically. Or if they're saying, I don't want to be involved in stocks, but I have some extra money, and it comes out of the banking system, when money comes out of the bank, the Wall Street wants to attract that money, so it competes against their product. Therefore, typically, they're not going to say good things about gold. When gold was at $500, they said it's never going to go to its previous high, like in 1980, which was 850. When it hit 800, they said it's going to collapse now. It blew through 800, went to 1,000. Right before 1,000, I said it'll never break this psychological barrier of $1,000. <laughs> right, of course. It just broke through it, and it kept on rising. Yeah, and, and you got to remember that that uh, every you know, the one thing whether you're a Christian or not, cr- Christians, unbelievers, the one thing we all have in common uh, is flesh. You, so there's all kinds of people up there talking the market up, talking the market down. George Soros has a history of doing this, so you have to be discerning, and you have to remember. And I tell in a couple of weeks, David, I'll have uh, it looks like I'll have about s- almost seventy high school students that I teach in three different classes, three different groups, but a a constitution class, civics class, and then a Christian ethics class. And on the first day of class, I come clean and I tell them, listen, don't for one minute think that I'm uh, objective. I'm not in here to be objective. (laughs) I'm totally subjective. (laughs) I'm in here to push a Christian worldview, to push the truth. And I'm going to come at it every, at everything through that lens. And just remember, everybody's trying to push you in one direction or another. And we have to remember, even in the financial world, whether it's CNBC or Wall Street Journal, that there really is norm, a, a hook on just about everything where people are putting out news, because journalism mostly is dead, that is like pushing a narrative one direction or the other. We have to be really discerning. Or am I sounding like just a paranoid schizophrenic? No, you're you're right on, and there's people, unfortunately, in my industry that tout gold going to five to ten thousand dollars. And let me just say publicly, I don't believe in that. I don't think it's going to do anything like that. If the world was like that, it would, the United States wouldn't even be the way it is today. We wouldn't have a thing called the dollar. Yeah, what it is now, the dollar would still be around, but it would be such a different world. I don't expect any of those things. I think gold's going to rise, but I don't think this is going to be the biggest boom happening and it's going to quadruple a year from now or these unrealistic numbers. I think gold is going to make a a run in gold, and we're going to have a decade of a run in gold like we had before, but it's not going to get triggered till about a year, year and a half from now, but that's the time when you want to buy in a depressed market and diversify. Yeah, and that's so uh, important to remember that. And again, that the mindset as we as you consider gold, and you look at precious metals relative to 
an investment portfolio. I always use this, and it's kind of simple uh, picture language. But, uh, you know, you got a teeter-totter out there on the playground, and if you load everything up on one end of the teeter-totter and, and all of a sudden somebody steps off the other end, uh, that's not so good. So you want to balance that out. That's what I've learned uh, from David over these last several years. As, as you look at precious metals, as just kind of a balancing, or I guess you could use the word hedge, against what's going on in the marketplace. And, and uh, I think that's a pretty effective uh, analogy of looking at it. You know, you're exactly right. And probably, you know, the, some of the things that drive gold is pretty simple. Higher interest rates drive gold, like the 70s. We had interest rates moving up. I don't think we're going to get to the 20% level or even double digits, but higher interest rates causes gold to move up. We're going to move into higher interest rates. So that's a reason for gold to move up. A stock market correction and a recession, it causes typically gold to move up. It did in 2008, and it went up very nicely for five years. And the debt structure of our country is what caused gold to move up. If you put a chart together from gold overlaying debt ceiling and national debt, gold from 2001 to 2011 moved tit for tat, step by step in direct correlation. Wow. And then what happened in 2012, we had a financial crisis of a credit problem, a credit downgrade as a country, and gold made a big run higher than reference to the national debt at that point. So now then gold has corrected and is under those levels. So either the debt has to come down or gold has to rise up. I don't see the debt coming down. So we're undervalued in gold in reference to a, a landmark or a yardstick called debt. And I know there's uh, you put out some uh, and create some extra uh, some great information, David, and you spend a lot of time researching and writing. And uh, I know you've got the newsletter, which is about tariffs. I want to talk about that real quick. And then a white paper that talks about uh, uh, a bubble, which bubble will, will first to trigger the coming great deflate. So tell us about those right quick. Well, the tariffs uh, I've been writing in depth more than I can say on on your show on you know what's really happening inside the mechanisms on effectiveness or, or, or lack of effectiveness of tariffs. And uh, it's a part two-part series. Part one just came out. Uh, part two is going to come out next month here coming up real quick. And then uh, the other one is the time is up. Which bubble will burst first to trigger the coming great deflate? You know, we go from bubble to bubble to bubble to bubble, and yeah. the Fed intervenes to create another bubble. That's what's happening here. <laughs> and we're going to see that bubble pop. I mean, it's not like the end of the world. It's just going to adjust. And so when when environments change, you need to change the portfolio to adjust to the environment. That's all investing is. And we have a great report that details a lot of bubbles that are being formed because of the government debt and the Federal Reserve. And, uh, and, and how can people, if they want to access that information, how can they get that? They can... Uh, Call our company the old-fashioned way at 844-879-8882, or they can go to our website at landmarkgold.com. David Fisher from Landmark Capital, thank you so much for uh, spending this hour with us, buddy. Uh, have a great time there in Hawaii with you and Marianne. Again, congratulations on your 18th anniversary, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, my brother. All right, buddy. Aloha. Have a great time. Mahalo. Mahalo. Talk to you later. And uh, try not to covet. Try not to be too jealous. Hey, I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on the rest of the week. And we always appreciate David being in here uh, to talk about these issues. And coming up uh, tomorrow is going to be a, another fascinating story, a testimony. Dee Barnes is her name. And God brought her. And, and this is a talk about controversial subject, especially if you go to the West Coast. God brought her out of uh, the homosexual lifestyle that she was leading. You know, she was a uh, down the road and living a full lesbian lifestyle. And God brought her out of that. She's going to be coming to town here in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, in a week and a half at a great conference here, uh, Transforming Grace, which is the whole purpose of Grace. So she's going to be on tomorrow. And then Wednesday, uh, I'll, I'll be pre-recording Wednesday's show, but I'll be talking earlier in, today, in the day to Ben Shapiro. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's talk about fast pace. Uh, he talks fast. I talk fast, which means everybody else is going to have to listen fast. So... We're going to be talking to Ben Shapiro. We've got a show with Dr. Danny Aiken for Theology Thursday, who's the president of Southeastern Baptist. So a lot of great content coming your way this week. So make sure you tune in. You can get the podcast. You can get all the other information. You can join us on Facebook Live. The easiest way, all the links there, just go to the thestevenobleshow.com, thestevenobleshow.com, and you can join us that way. Again, if you want uh, a little piece of scripture each morning, a little teaching, we're in the book of Proverbs. Just text the word DO 
DOSE to 66866 to get my daily DOSE devotional. Text the word DOSE to 66866. This is Steve Noble, and God willing, I'll talk to you again real soon.